I'm Richard Dodd, and you're listening to the Ecology Academy podcast. This is a show where we get to talk and learn about all things ecological, including interviews with top ecologists, both employers and employees, those working with ecologists, and also aspiring and inspiring career-seeking individuals setting out to make a difference. The show aims to provide you with insights, advice, and inspiration to help you succeed and excel as an effective ecologist and to make a real difference to our natural environment. Today, I'm speaking with two students from Nottingham Trent University about their educational experience over the past few years and aspirations for the future. Welcome to the Ecology Academy, Rachel and Nina. Hi, Richard. Hi there. Hi, Richard. Oh, yeah. So we're just going to go straight into it, if that's OK. Um, so let, let's introduce uh, each of you. So, uh, Rachel, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and what you're studying at um, Nottingham Trent University. OK, so I'm 21 years old in my second year at Nottingham Trent University studying ecology and conservation. Ecology and conservation. And uh, Nina? Uh, hi, I'm Nina. I'm 26. Um, I went to uni once before to study geography. Uh, it didn't go well. And then I came back to it two years ago to study ecology and conservation. Ecology and conservation. So you both in the, I say both uh, on that second year course then? Yeah. In the second year yeah. there. So yeah, how, how have you found it so far? So we'll, we'll take each person in turn. So, so Rachel, I, why did you decide on a, uh, what, a degree, first of all? Let's go with that. I never really wanted to go to university, to be honest. It was a, a very last minute thing for me. I randomly saw the course while scrolling on social media and it just like really shot out at me and made me want to look into it more. And so I carried on reading and because of COVID, I wasn't able to go and visit any universities. So it was just a real shot in the dark for me and it just happened to be one of the best decisions I've ever made, to be honest. Um, I'm so much more confident two years on. Um, and yeah, I feel like it was definitely the right decision. Excellent. All oh, right. OK, so yeah. So I mean, in terms of, so what was the ultimate decision? So why did you decide to go to university then? Was it, uh, you know, is it something that you, you didn't want to, you know, miss out of? Or is it something, you know, you thought about yeah, actually career? Yeah, or kind of. Um, I just grew a lot as a person. I, I took a year out after I finished sixth form and I, I really enjoyed my biology subjects and my math subjects at school. And so I wanted to maybe go somewhere in that direction and figured I can't really go much further without going to university. And so that's what kind of gave me that little push, I guess. Okay. And did you go through, I mean, you, 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 A-levels at all? What, what A-levels did you take if you did any? Yeah, I did maths, biology and psychology. I wanted to be a nurse, but okay. then mm -hmm. a big something happened and, and then I changed my mind, I guess. Yeah. What was it? Why did you change your mind, do you think? Oh, it, it was a big rock and roll roller coaster in my life, really. Um, just such personal stuff. And yeah. then, yeah, I decided it wouldn't be for me, really. No. Yeah. No, I, 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 I can tell you, I, I, I sort of, um, I ducked out of A-levels. Uh, uh, really um so um i didn't do any a levels at all i started an a level biology correspondence course and because i wanted to be a veterinary surgeon you know so mm. uh, that's what that's one of the things i wanted to do and uh, i think i started gcse's and i think it was the first year ever to do gcse's and um i failed them miserably i must admit that um i think i eventually got a well i i got a c grade in music and maths uh, and that was about it. And then <laughs> on a retake, I think I got a C in biology. Um, but that, unfortunately, that wasn't enough to keep me going for A-level <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. after, after school there. But um, Nina, you, um, so you, is this your, I say, I say second attempt uh, at, uh, at university there. Um, so what prompted you to uh, uh, take up the course at uh, Nottingham Trent? Um, so I heard dropped out of my first course because um, I was struggling a little bit and I sort of worked a few odd jobs from there um, and then I actually got a diagnosis of autism um, and then I thought I was like oh that's why I struggled at university before so I can go back with the help and maybe complete the degree 
Um, so I, again, with A-levels, I didn't do very well with them. Um, so I was doing a biology A-level and then COVID hit mm. and I couldn't do the practical part of the exam. And I thought, oh, well, maybe it's worth just applying this year and seeing what, seeing if I get in. So I applied for about five universities and Nottingham Trent responded the hour I sent off my UCAS. <laughs> Within the hour, within so the before hour. I've actually gotten in somewhere, yeah. maybe it's possible. Oh yeah! And how did that feel? Oh, it was. I was. I think I was dancing around the kitchen. Yeah, that's amazing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was looking at sort of ecology courses because I've always loved the environment. Um, and having studied geography before, I was like, well, maybe I want to focus not just on the environmental side, but mm. the wildlife as well. And ecology is like the perfect mix. Yeah. Um, so I actually applied for the wildlife conservation and the ecology and conservation for Nottingham Trent. And it was the ecology one that responded within the hour. And I was like, oh, that gives them some brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in terms of, I mean, you, I mean, I suppose dealing with, um, as look, I mean, we've obviously been just been through a little bit of a, a a sort of a change, really, in terms of the landscape um, for for uh, under COVID, really, and um, your educational careers, shall we, or education experience, not careers, education experience. And so, um, start with Nina. So, in terms of you know um, your experience, both with you know the on the educational side and the support, I suppose, Nottingham Trent University, I assume, provided you with them. Um, uh, with, with um, your experience with autism as well. So, uh, what was that like? How did you? How did you? How did you cope within the first year, second year, and and, and um, um, are you looking forward to the final year? I think looking forward to is you know, like a little bit stressing about it, but mm. <laughs> um, I sort of don't want it to end as well because, um, in regards to support, Nottingham Trent has been extremely supportive. Not just even the dedicated support staff, just in general the lecturers as well um they really do cater to everything and i don't know whether it's a follow-on from covid or not but um all of the lectures are recorded so you can go over them and write detailed notes and i think i really really like that because it just if going over and over it just really cements it mm-hmm. um so i i really do thank nottingham trent for everything that they've done absolutely amazing support yeah so you found actually not beneficial but um you know helpful in terms of recorded sessions um as well so i mean um rachel did you, how did you find it in the past couple of years yeah well obviously um the online sessions weren't exactly what i signed up for when i decided i wanted to go to uni <laughs> um i'm quite like um i like chatting to people and stuff so not being able to uh see everyone in person was wasn't fantastic i got really close with my housemates though which was a positive um because we've been very supportive to each other um uh yeah okay okay yeah and in terms of your i mean yeah so the first year i mean was that was that quite challenging then you say because you know um you know my, my first year at university i mean i can remember yes it's a mixture of um you know, a bit of fear. I'm sure it was fear in, involved in that area, and um, you know, um, you know, changing because I, I went as a mature student as well, and I was 25 when I started uh, university, and you know, it gives you a little bit of preparation, but you know, it's still a stranger environment, you know, strange environment to actually find yourself in. So, in in terms of your first year, then, um, you know, you didn't get that opportunity to like I say socialize, but you know, get to know your course colleagues um, in the same way as perhaps you, you would have done maybe um, a, a year before? No, um, I do have a very distinct memory. Our first practical together, we were helping clear out <laughs> the pond on campus. So, <laughs> that's a, a was that a soldier, pleasurable experience? Water soldier. <laughs> and me and Nina were partners. Uh-huh. <laughs> we had to get into the pond wearing um, all these waterproofs and take out a load of... Um, Water soldier with our rakes, and that was a great bonding experience. Even though we had to stay apart, accidentally flinging water soldiers at you. <laughs> it was it was a good laugh. So the thing with our course was we were still able to do a lot of stuff yeah. like in person because it was all outside and we had all of our practicals. So we did get to know each other a little bit. Um, obviously, it was a bit different wearing masks and 
mm. and not having our lectures in person as well though in terms of people on the co- how many people were on the course then in total 26 27 yeah 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 and in terms yeah. of, I suppose, management, I mean, um, I lectured at the um, Royal Agricultural University and uh, I think we, we we took out small groups. Was that similar to yourself as well? So like the rule of six, I think it was, or something like that. Yeah, I think the groups were, the course was halved at quite a lot. Mm. Yeah, we sort of yeah rotate. split in two. Okay, and, and in terms of, uh, I suppose, the... Yeah, the presentations given online then. So did you experience any um, in you know, in lecture room for presentations at all? Because the rules kept changing here and there. Mm. um, NTU did keep very up to date with it. So we sort of had a couple at the very start, a big gap, then a couple, then another lockdown, and then a few Mm. here and there. So it was, we did have a few, but it was very sort of ad hoc. And how did you find, I mean, in terms of, I mean, it was difficult for everyone, I'm sure, but, you know, in terms of... Obviously, Nottingham Trend will, will, will advise you and update you as soon as they they knew the sort of the scenario as well, the changes to sort of um, regulations and rules. But in terms of, I suppose, your ability to adapt, I mean, I, I think in the past two years have probably been quite challenging in terms of that. You know, as you say, going from, um, f- um, you know, online presentations to potentially going into the classroom situations and then the practical sessions outside, so, um, I, I mean, I mean did, did it, was it favourable for either of you or did you find it extremely disruptive? So, uh, to Rachel first, if, if I may. Mm, I'd say it's tough to say, really. Um, they were quite good at communicating and making sure we knew where, where we were meant to be mm-hmm. or if it was online. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was all right, to be honest. Okay, I suppose it's difficult. We didn't really have isn't... a problem with it. We got used to it, yeah. like just being able to roll out of bed and get onto your lecture <laughs> kind of thing, rather than having to get up early and travel to campus. I suppose it's difficult to compare, isn't it? Because you've got nothing to compare it against. Uh, and that's a, you know, that's yeah. a, if you were in year one and you were in lectures and then, you know, year two is completely different, I suppose it's a bit of a, you know, you can compare it to. Um, uh, you know, the, the, between the two, those two years. How about yourself, Nina? Um, how did you find um, the sort of a, um, your ability to adapt or um, you know uh, cope with uh, the changes? It was definitely a test of character. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think adapting and changing to environments isn't a strong suit of mine. Right. Um, but it was kind of nice because it it showed like my attendance was quite high, um, so it showed that I could do it, although it was a bit difficult. So it was kind of nice to sort of prove to myself that I could do it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, a little part of me did, like you say, because I didn't have to leave my house, it was quite nice to be able to just sort of, because um, I live maybe about half an hour away from campus. Um, so at that time I was cycling two hours there and back. Wow. Um, so it was really nice to avoid the cycle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, the, the daily commute. <laughs> wow. Yeah, incredible. Right, right. So in terms of, uh, okay, uh, in terms of your, um, I mean, in terms of why you chose that course, I mean, it, did you have something in mind or was it something that, you know, as I say, you've you got a, a passion about uh, like wildlife and conservation. So um, just trying to understand um, um, the reasons why you selected that this course, wildlife conservation over other courses then, if you, if, or was it always going to be wildlife and conservation? Um, uh, Rachel? Um, well, like I said, I wanted to be a nurse, but then uh, lots of things changed and had sort of like um, a snap and change my mind. So I never really looked around that many courses, to be honest. I looked at different universities, but only online because I couldn't go and visit them. Um, and yeah, this one just really stood out to me for some reason. And so, yeah, I never really looked at many others. I didn't really know what careers I could even get yeah. out of it. I, mm. I very much have that mindset that if you do what will interest you, you'll end up doing something that you really like doing long term. Um, and that's just like a priority to me. All right. OK. And, and, and yourself, Nina? Um, yeah, I've kind of gone through a lot of um, sort of what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Um, and I was stressed about it for a very long time. <laughs> And then again, like after I got the diagnosis, I realized that there's a, a sort of things take a lot of energy away from me. 
every job that I've had, it's always I've always come back home and I've always just gone, oh, mm. and I've just needed a few hours to sort of calm down. But when I'm out hiking, when I'm taking photos of invertebrates and I'm looking at birds, whenever I come home, I don't go, oh, I'm energized. Yeah. And it really sort of gave me that energy. And I was like, oh, well, maybe that's the key. Maybe this is what I should focus on. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a nice little, it took me a few years to work it out. Because <laughs> again, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, where I put myself. Mm. There's there loads of careers that I tried and it didn't quite fit. Um, but maybe sometimes it's good not to have an end goal and it's just to take it sort of break it down a little bit. And instead of thinking so far in the future, just sort of little steps to it. Yeah. yeah I, th- I think, um, over the past, I mean, I think, you know, life changes us all. And, um, I think over the past few years, you know, I think you big, it's only really in later life, uh, as I am, you know, entering my, um, fifth decade. It's, uh, you know, thing, things still change. And um, I think that's, you know, I'm still trying to find my own sort of uh, red threads. And, and that's, I, I think that's a little bit of, a little sort of uh, recommendation is there's a, a great book and it's by uh, someone called uh, Marcus Buckingham. And um, it's called Love and Work. And that reintroduces the idea of those what he calls red threads or something that you really fires you up. You know, when do you lose concentration and that you don't realize that time's gone by because you've been completing a task and, um, you know, uh, you instantly volunteer for something. And, um, uh, you know, if you're the first one to put your hand up to volunteer for that, uh, that uh, task um, and you, you create or you go to do the task and all of a sudden you find out you're a sort of natural at doing those sorts of things as well. So finding things you love, um, and doing them every day. And I think that was the key point in his book there. He was finding something you love and doing it every day. Um, so it may be five minutes, maybe, um, you know, you get to do it for three hours. But um, so walking, for instance, Nina, or, uh, you know, photography, um, outdoor space, that's something that you, you know, you could explore further, potentially. Yeah, that's also a big part of um, why Enter You spoke to me a little bit, because... Hmm. Um, Again, I because there were no open days, I ended up driving to the campus. Um, and I remember pulling up to the car park and it was just surrounded by trees and fields. And I was like, yeah, this is this is the one. <laughs> I, I must admit, um, we've just completed a, um, a six-week course at Nottingham Trent University, haven't we? So the, this career accelerator. And uh, um, going on campus, I can s- totally see why. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed actually just turning up before I, I, I met any of you and... Uh, just walking around your your beautiful campus, and you're right. I mean, it just fills you with joy. Just fills you with joy. You know, the trees, the fields, the hedgerows, the, the ponds. I didn't get anything thrown at me from the, from any <laughs> ponds, uh, but uh, you know, I could see, see it's just yeah, yeah. So very beautiful campus. Very very lucky. I've been living on campus for two years now, and I still like walk around. And I'm like, oh, I'm just so lucky. Mm. Mm. especially with the little hut in the forest and yeah being able beautiful. to walk down to the badger sets it's just <laughs> yeah before I moved to university I spent uh maybe three years in the center of Bradford and it, it really sort of got me down and I kept trying to find little escapes and little yeah. things and now I've got a little house sort of near the campus and sort of in this rural setting I've noticed a big change in my mental health wow it right. really does make a difference yeah yeah, so no, I I I think you know I'd certainly be you know personally be lost without a you know being able to walk and out in outdoors and you know enjoy the wildlife. I mean that, that we've just moved offices. Just uh, as an aside, uh, we've moved offices to a beautiful location in uh, Brimscombe in, in in Gloucestershire, and uh, yeah, the you know, canal. We've got beautiful scenery. We've got we've got valleys. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, so before you know just moving up from that the plateau at the top of uh you know, and, and it's great beautiful you know beautiful landscape in terms of film, farming and agricultural landscape but you know there's no there's no there's no steep sodded valleys <laughs> and that's that, yeah that's what i miss about yorkshire because nottinghamshire is so flat mm. and then whenever i go back to, back up to uh, yorkshire i'm like ah hills valleys waterfalls finally <laughs> yeah i'm the exact same um i grew up on the isle of man and being away from there has just made me appreciate it so much more because oh, you yeah. can't you kind of go blind to it. But now every time I visit home, I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, it makes, <laughs> it makes you appreciate wow. it a lot more. There we go. 
So, um, <laughs> so it turned our attention to obviously you've just completed year two of um, your, your of your degree course there. So, I mean, I imagine, uh, I, well, I'm assuming that um, year three is, I mean, unless you're taking a placement year, is it you're going straight into your final year there? So, um, Rachel, you're, you're, no, you're, no, I'm no, what, what's happening with you? Placement year. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a placement over back home on the Isle of Man with the uh, Manx Wildlife Trust. And they're going to get me doing all sorts of stuff, I, I think. Oh, yes. I hope. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about this. So, um, I mean, in terms of your how you found this placement and in terms of the application. So, we you know, how did you, you know, did you have to apply for it? Um, how did you apply for it? And when did you hear back? So, uh, take, 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 take me through um, sort of how you found out about um um, this post to this placement? Yeah, so um, it wasn't an advertised post. In fact, they've never done a placement for an undergraduate before. Um, I just reached out, I emailed them because I've been aware of them, obviously, growing up there. Um, and so I reached out thinking it would just be the perfect placement for me. You could stay at home, save a bit of money, easy to travel there because it's right near my house. Um, and so I reached out and they said that they'd be interested in giving me a placement. They just needed some like, um, they wanted to see some of my assignments that I had completed for uni. So I had to send them some graded assignments so they could see kind of what work I was getting up to. And, and then obviously with my CV and a cover letter and stuff that I'd sent them as well. And yeah, it was that was basically a yes from there. I had a little, um, interview over Zoom and got to, they got to know me there and then since then I've been and visited the office gotten to have a little tour around meet everybody and I'm just really excited to get started gosh yeah, yeah. when do you start um I start in September yeah and is it your, uh, um, I mean, how many people, do you know how many people work for the wildlife trust on, on the Manx? Uh, it's not a massive oh, wildlife trust no um mm-hmm. I can't remember an exact figure i'd say maybe under 20. under 20 yeah 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 okay uh, and yeah well, well congratulations on that that's fantastic and so, and so so yeah so there was no advertised post you just contacted them um mm, you which discussed... i highly recommend doing because yeah. it was it was a really good opportunity that wouldn't i wouldn't have known about otherwise and I think that's a really great um, piece of advice, really, because, um, you know, uh, most of us think, you know, that the job is advertised. And we, uh, you know, we apply for the job. If we don't get the job, we're waiting for the next one to be advertised. And maybe being, um, you know, there, there are other avenues. I mean, I think, as you say, just to, uh, um, if you can, and if you, you know, I, I think reaching out to people, uh, you know, your own network, for instance, so you knew people or, we're familiar with people on the Isle of Man in terms of uh, what roles were there, so that that does help. But um, you know, just getting yourself into different rooms, I think, will will also help too. So, um, yeah, good luck with that in September. So, so Nina, are, are you starting straight into year three, or do you have a placement at all? No, going straight into year three. Excellent. So, oh, you'll you'll miss each other in the final year then. We've still got the group chat. We'll still. Oh, we good. do still have the group chat. I'll be asking loads of questions when I'm in final year, and you've all finished. Giving all the tips, <laughs> all the gossip. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and so in terms of your um, your final year, then Nina. So, I mean, have you chosen modules for your final year? Is, is that has been completed now? Yeah, we chose that um, a couple of months ago. Um, had the option between food security or um, marine. Oh, I've yeah. forgotten. Yeah, I've forgotten what the module was. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was a tough one, actually. Yeah. Because um, Nottingham's not a... too close to the, the coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, right I can't, right yeah, I can't remember any coast next to But yeah, marine. <laughs> marine yeah. So what did, you, what did you choose, sorry? Yeah. Uh, so I chose the marine one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. After a lot of deliberation. Mm-hmm. And um, so that obviously you start back in September, or is it <clears> early October you start back? Uh, early October, I think. There's a. Because um, one of the modules that we chose was a field course okay so we could choose either to go to um south africa or wales uh, so it's the wales field trip that's in september and mm-hmm. then we officially start the course oh lovely so, uh, so whereabouts in wales are you going do you know um i know it's called um dale fort or fort dale oh um, yeah pembrokeshire. Yes. pembrokeshire yeah that's, yeah that's a field studies council site I yeah 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 yeah, so um, I I used to work with the Fields Lewis Council, but not not in Dale Ford, but uh, over Nettlecombe Court in Somerset, 
uh, there. So uh, I was there. I, I did my placement. So I did a placement year uh, myself. Um, so I did two years uh, zoology degree in Cardiff. Uh, and then my placement year was, as I say, Nettlecombe Court with the fields those council as a, a grounds placement. Um, so rather than actually um, the, in the educational space. But um, yeah, yeah. So uh, in terms of your, um, I mean, perhaps it's too far out to think about um, a year, you know, life after university. But um, is it something, I mean, be honest with me, you know, is it something you've considered in terms of what happens after university? Um, um, or not? So, yeah, Nina, you're sh- you're nodding your head there, not shaking your head. You're yeah, your head. I'm. A, I'm, ex- I'm. I really like to have a plan in place, mm-hmm. um, and I'm very, very anxious about it because it's one of those things where I can put plans in place and I can say, well, I want to do this, this, and this, but it's sort of a thing where plans change, yeah. and you can say to yourself, I want to be here in five years, and you probably won't be, but it's just sort of there's so many options, there's so many different avenues to go down. It's just sort of finding the path and finding which one's for me. Yeah. And also options that you don't even know are there yet can pop up. Yeah. That's it. A lot can change in two years, as we know. That's it. No. <laughs> Hopefully for the better. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> Only I'm, up I'm, from here, please. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, indeed. indeed. No, I think you're right in, in terms of, um, I, I think before people were saying, you know, you need to make a, you know, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I've said it. I've said it to people. You know, making making a career plan and get that sorted, and then you know, all of a sudden, uh, I say making a career plan, and you, I think that um, in terms of planning, you're right. It is very good to have a direction to go in, in terms of um, you know a, a place that you can you can envisage, but not necessarily. It doesn't matter if you get there or not. I think it's it is that's that it's that journey along the way because something may crop up or pop up in you know and, and you want to take advantage of that and if you're quite rigid in oh no that was my goal if I don't reach my goal you know I've you know you know uh, inverted commas failed you know, it's because there's nothing about mm-hmm. failing at all you know it's just different directions you you take you can take much opportunity in that but you I think it's, most people do need something to pin on so to have a look at you know so to aim for but not necessarily rich. Uh, there. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I, I think um, you know that's that's you know I think that's what we sort you know sort of advise now really is just to uh, have have something in mind, but be open to those opportunities as they arise there. Um, otherwise, I'd be I'd be I don't know still working in B and Q. Nothing wrong with B and Q. Nothing wrong with B and Q at all, you know. But you know, I, I did I did I think I did very well on the paint section, paint and decorating section. Yeah, really good. Yeah, but um, I'd still be in Subway. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. I said I don't get Subway. I don't get Subway. I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps uh, I, I don't know. I'm perhaps I'm too old for Subway. Never too old for Subway. Never too old for Subway. Here we go. <laughs> um, and you self courage. I mean, is it is something like you considered? I mean, you know, say life after university. What was is, is there anything you've um, aiming for? That's, that's all. I oh, no, I've really not got anything in place at the moment. To be completely honest, uh, I'm hoping that along the next year on my placement something's gonna really reach out to me and and I'm gonna I'm gonna just fall in love with something and that's gonna be what I want to do and so that's kind of what I'm I'm hoping for at this moment or on the on the flip side I might hate it all and Mm. then just change my mind completely but let's hope it's the first one not knowing is still a a good like the power of deduction still works Exactly. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, um, I'll say I don't think I've regretted, I don't think so, I may, I may come back on this, but uh, I don't think I've regretted anything I've done. I may have regretted things I haven't done, mm. but, you know, hopefully they're few and far between those 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 ones, really. So uh, Exactly, because you're always learning, aren't you? You are. You are. Great. Great. Well, I, I think uh, we're going to wrap up, if we may, but uh, I just want to say uh, it's been an absolute um, pleasure meeting you both. Um, both, uh, you say, on the campus, on your beautiful campus um, at uh, Nottingham Trent University, um, but also thank you for also attending this uh, podcast as well. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, such very you know, late notice to come on to the, the podcast too. But um, um, I wish you all the best in your placements, Rachel, and your final year, Nina. And uh, but thank you for joining me on the Ecology Academy podcast. Well, thank, thank you very much for having us. Yeah. If you enjoy our show and want to help, then please click on the subscribe button and rate us on your favourite podcast player, as that's how you can inspire ecologists in the making, help retain great talent and 
provide insights of our industry to a much wider audience of why ecology really does matter. Thank you. And remember, learning is a lifelong endeavour. So stay curious, be adventurous and build bridges for others to cross.